What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Good Wednesday afternoon, May 25th, 2022 is the date. It's about 11.53 a.m. California time here. 2.0 earthquake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows the latest quake there into the area of western Nevada, it looks like. Adding back on some of this earthquake activity. Uh, the stream did go down overnight, suspiciously, around 3.30 in the morning. It's actually done that the past two nights now in a row. So, uh, it is what it is trying to figure out who is behind it and how to keep it from happening is kind of racking my nerves a little bit but it is what it is let's go ahead and check out uh, first off some space weather here real quick let me pull up the solar ham site got an m flare kicking up a lower m flare looks like uh looks like it has peaked out here about 1.3 or so on the x-ray flux data that's going to be this spike right here that's about the uh, largest flare we've seen here in the past few days uh, and this is coming off of a sunspot let me make sure i got this the latest data here looks like potentially this one right here i'm not for sure which sunspot number that is but you can see the uh, well-defined brightness to it indicating that uh, m flare that just kicked up now, these guys aren't showing any noteworthy events, but we all obviously see it there. Kicking up into the R1 uh, radiation storm. Not a whole lot uh, there, not a strong flare. It is producing a little bit of uh, radio blackouts. Centered, uh, looks like directly over North America. See that uh, green color? Again, this just occurred a little bit ago. I'm sure this map was a little bit stronger uh, a few minutes ago. But uh, yeah, looks like that came from the sunspot numbered 3016. Going to be this one right here. Kind of odd, right? Because it doesn't look like the uh, dynamics are mixing all that great in this sunspot. But it did produce an M flare. Got some further development around the bend here. Some new sunspots. Either way, very active in terms of sunspot activity. And um, we'll keep an eye on that, obviously, as we go forth towards the solar maximum. All right, let's get back into earthquake activity. Here over the last 24 hours, shown some movement throughout the western portion here of the North American plate. Uh, also some activity scattered out and about throughout the uh, areas over here around the Java Trench and just west of the Java Trench. We've seen a 5.2 in the Indian Ocean. This one pretty shallow. Um, have been watching some deeper movement along the Java Trench here recently, but it's tapered off. Uh, still might be an area to watch closely in terms of some larger scale movement. Um, let's see, South America area pretty quiet as far as the Peru Chile Trench goes. Some movement throughout the Puerto Rico area. That's been another hot spot of some movement outside of Haiti as well. Seen a 4.1 actually in the Dominican Republic region. Getting some activity kicking up once again here around the British Virgin Islands, right around the Puerto Rico Trench once again. Uh, some shallow earthquake activity at that though. Nothing deep going on, just a couple upper threes uh, overnight in that region. Uh, looking at the West Coast activity, got some movement kicking up here into Nevada, north of Reno. Uh, looks like around the Sutcliffe area, Nevada 2.0. Some movement uh, in a swarm fashion here around the Pyramid Lake. That's a pretty significant swarm of about 21 earthquakes uh, on the eastern side of Pyramid Lake. Now the depths here of these earthquakes, pretty uh, pretty deep. Roughly about 12 kilometers or so. A little bit more shallower for some of them. But uh, that's some deeper movement taking place here on the eastern side of the Pyramid Lake. Looks like this is on the eastern Pyramid Lake Fault. Uh, obviously, looks like just at the southern end of it. Uncertain on the amount of uh, large-scale movement that has occurred out here historically. Uh, let's go ahead and check out at least the map here and see if we can uh, find that out. If not, we'll cover that in a little bit more detail tonight. Uh, notice all of this activity kicking up is automatic status review. Uh, let's see, as far as the key goes, there's not a whole lot of historical earthquake data out here. Looks like up north, a uh, 4.5 to 5.0 magnitude earthquake has struck since about 1900, but specifically around here. 
I'm not seeing anything being reported. That doesn't mean there hasn't been anything, but uh, at least on their catalog. Satellite view. Uh, I don't think there's snow out there right now. But uh, let's see what we got here. Again, this is occurring deep down there into the plate. I don't think it's volcanic. Uh, obviously, there has been uh, ancient volcanic activity out here in the region. But uh, this swarm is something definitely we're going to keep an eye on and see what may become of it because that's a, that's a pretty good swarm of earthquakes here in a short amount of time. 21 earthquakes so far in that uh, swarm. Let me see if we got anything above the 2.5. We got a couple. Uh, looks like that was overnight and this morning time frame, 2.5 and a 2.5. The rest of these all microquakes. If you remember over, I believe it was yesterday. Let's see if I can bring up seven days. Eh, that's probably going to show quite a bit. But uh, we did see a wide swath of activity throughout the western portion of Nevada. Uh, and away from our normal swarm area down here across the Candelaria Hills. Normally, at least earlier this year and uh, late last year, uh, following that six-pointer they had back in 2019 around this region, uh, there's always been that aftershock sequence that kind of stretches across the desert here, across this highway, into the Candelaria Hills um, in that type of fashion. Uh, but the swarming that we've seen outside of here has just been a broad area, uh, and it stretched all the way up north of Carson City and uh, areas around this other swarming region, this aftershock sequence. So uh, not for sure what's going on out there in Nevada, but it's something to keep an eye on for certain as uh, we're watching this warm kick up there on the east side of Pyramid Lake. Um, into uh, Oregon, a little bit of activity once again around the, uh, see they have it set at the Three Rivers, Oregon, but that's not Three Rivers, Oregon area. It's the Newberry Volcano. This activity though from late last night, nothing showing up here on the USGS map right now. We will check out the live seismographs here in a second. One earthquake south of Portland. Looks like a 2.7 deep though into the Cascadia subduction zone. It's kind of down there at 24 kilometers. Uh, rest of Washington looks somewhat quiet. Uh, let's see what we got here for the rest of California. Pretty spotty uh, once we head south here. Uh, looks like some activity around the Palmdale region on the San Andreas Fault and getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of activity out the southern end of the Brawley seismic zone at the Imperial Fault junction here. And a little activity here in Mexicali, uh, south of the border. A little bit of independent swarming going on. So a couple swarms in two different locations. Um, I think it's something to watch closely. It could be pointing towards a uh, regional earthquake here along the west coast. Got to watch that out. We'll watch for that pretty closely. We'll monitor the swarm uh, activity throughout the day. Um, movement up into the north part of Utah through Wyoming or portions of northwestern Wyoming. Low activity kicking up around Yellowstone National Park. That's key up here. The latest activity and um, well, a little bit of movement here on the Maple Creek section. Uh, most of it looks like it's down here in the southern end of the Yellowstone area. couple small quakes in there you guys can see that no major swarms going on there at Yellowstone though just a uh, couple earthquakes in the vicinity of Yellowstone National Park uh, movement throughout Oklahoma Texas area a little spotty um, one earthquake here on the Arkansas Missouri line near um, the Missouri it looks like it's on the Missouri side actually Arkansas here 2.1 at 11 kilometers uh, near Pontiac, Missouri, it looks like. Northwest of Mountain Home. New Madrid zone specifically looks quiet along that fault system. One earthquake here around Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, aside from that, not, uh, not a whole lot going on across the eastern seaboard. Uh, let's see, make sure we got everything keyed up. I've been having issues with this uh, OBS software recently doing some weird, weird stuff again. Like I say, my computer shutting down here uh, over the past two nights at about 3 to 3.30 in the morning. And, well, not my computer, but uh, the stream itself. So I, I don't know who I made mad again, but uh, man, not good. All right, trimmer activity last night was pretty sufficient. 
up and down the board. Um, remember all this trimmer activity is occurring underneath the North American plate. You're getting a lot of subduction and some buildup here, obviously at the tension area, at the locked area of the Cascadia. And I believe that does play a part inland to an extent uh, in the North American plate here, the Great Basin area. I think that's kind of why we're seeing that uh, swarming activity kick up uh, pretty sufficiently with, with all the swarming we've seen here over the last week or so, which is over about, uh, well, it's over 3,000 epicenters of trimmer. And uh, the majority of it has been in Northern California and the Washington area. So getting some migration, getting that plate diving down here underneath the North American plate, kind of squeezing over here at the east uh, t towards the Great Basin area. So we'll, either way, the swarming, it's a little odd, but I have a feeling it is associated with the trimmer activity we're looking at along the Cascadia. Uh, let's go back here to the earthquake activity. And uh, worldwide, that's about it. Let's go ahead and check out the bounce back and forth. Meant to stay on this page. Uh, Newberry Volcano in Oregon. We'll check out the live recorded seismographs here. See if we got any activity kicking up that is not being reported by the USGS. Stand by for just a second here, folks. Alrighty, any day now, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Looks like maybe a little bit here overnight and this morning, some very small quakes. There could be some wind events going on up there as well. Uh, these don't look distinctly like earthquakes though. Uh, the previous day did show the movement that they are reporting. It's gonna be these earthquakes right here. There's a one point, uh, can't remember what it was, 1.9, 1.2. Uh, and a couple smaller quakes. So uh, that specific volcano looks calm, at least for the moment, in terms of um, earthquake activity. Mount St. Helens, again, nothing being reported since the 13th. We all know that's a lie. Um, there's obviously activity. We've been watching it pretty, uh, pretty closely on every update here at the dome station at the Mount St. Helens region, getting some of that odd error activity here in this graph as well. Something, something similar to what we've seen over here in Yellowstone, right? You see this around the Hebgen Lake, but I believe that's some error activity um, taking place in the region, uh, or at least with that uh, seismograph station. But kind of odd, finding it odd here that uh, kicked up here in the Mount St. Helens region as well. Okay, earthquake activity definitely showing up here. Blue spike. Black, red, someone mentioned here that uh, red means magma, blue means earthquakes. No, not really. That has nothing to do with the colors. The colors themselves are to differentiate, uh, to tell the difference here between the time. A lot of times there'll be interference and the blue lines will indicate a time frame. So this blue earthquake here, this earthquake on the blue line, kicked up around the, uh, between the 1220 and the 1320 time stamp. The black one here, uh, kicked up between 1520 and 1620 and so on. So these red lines mean nothing in terms of what is going on below the ground. All it is, uh, the color differences mean um, time, different time. So they can uh, uh, decipher where these earthquakes struck at on the time scale. Someone mentioned that in the comments last night, so I figured I would clarify that. And earthquake activity, obviously, over the morning, it definitely happened in there, some small microquakes. Uh, there at Mount St. Helens, so it is what it is. Nothing major, but there is still an ongoing activity, right, at Mount St. Helens with that uh, little microquake activity. All right, folks, I'm gonna jump off here. Uh, I gotta get uh, gotta get some ice, I believe here, um, for some sodas and whatnot here today. It's supposed to be 100 degrees today. Uh, no, 105 today. It's already 97. And it's only uh, 12 o'clock here, noon. It's hot, very hot. But uh, it is what it is, folks. All right, I'm gonna bounce out of here. I will keep you guys updated on the activity kicking up there in Nevada. I don't believe too much of it is showing up here on the map. Looks like maybe the, uh, the two pointers did in 2.5, but uh, other than that, uh, I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to pull up a uh, local station there in the vicinity of the Pyramid Lake, Nevada area to monitor that uh, ongoing swarm, which I'll take care of here in just a little bit. 
All right, guys, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your uh, afternoon, and we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight. Peace out.